My fellow turkeys, what we are looking at right now is a fully playable Yozora mod created by Ashura. Uh, yeah, my god, we've covered a lot of different mods for Kingdom Hearts 3 here on the channel, and quite a few different playable character mods, but I do have to say this goes down as the absolute coolest so far. Uh, and I would probably have to say that this is like the most anticipated, most requested playable character mod for Kingdom Hearts 3, the ultimate super boss of not just Kingdom Hearts 3, but I think we can probably all agree on this, uh, Kingdom Hearts as a whole. Yeah, this character is now fully playable. Ashura has done God's work right here, and although I know that at some point in Kingdom Hearts' future, hopefully maybe not too far off, we will likely be playing as Yozora. This mod right here is going to allow us a little taste test of what it feels like to be in the boots of this absolute madman. Now do keep in mind, this is version 1.0 of the mod. Uh, Ashura has stressed the fact that this is very much still a work in progress and that there are quite a few different things that do need to be worked on as well as other future plans for the mod itself uh, for new additions that will be added over time. Apparently, from what Ashura has explained, uh, they are planning on working on this mod for quite some time to come. But for the most part, this works extremely well. Now, if you guys have seen any of my other fully playable character mod feature videos, what that essentially means is you can play as that certain character from start to finish. The character is going to be able to perform any of the actions that Sora would usually be able to perform. Everything from using team attacks to links to the parkour system, it all works. It's also worth mentioning, while not absolutely necessary, it is highly recommended that you use both the Kingdom Hearts 3 mod loader and improved movement mod. From my experience, without the Kingdom Hearts 3 mod loader installed, I found that the game crashed consistently and the mod just simply wouldn't work, so highly recommend that you guys install that first. In regards to improved movement, due to Yozora's animations, Yozora will feel a lot better to actually play with improved movement, so again, highly recommend that you have both of these installed before going ahead with this mod. The links to both of them, as well as obviously the Yozora mod, will be in the description down below. So as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, yes this does come with a custom main menu screen with the Verum Rex ad that plays at the very beginning of the Toy Box world. That video is playing during the main menu. It also replaces the Daily Beloved theme too. Yuzora's base combo consists of the different attacks that Yuzora uses within the secret fight. Yuzora's way of attacking is probably the most anime you'll get. It's of course inspired through Noctis and Noctis's warp striking as I guess you could say that Yuzora in a sense is sort of the spiritual successor to that of Noctis. And we're not so much talking about Final Fantasy XV Noctis, more so versus XIII Noctis. With each slash following up with a warp strike uh, to follow into the next slash, it's really some badass stuff. Yuzora's final attack before the combo finisher is him striking forward, which can cover a lot of distance and almost sort of works like a sliding dash type of attack, only that it's partway through the combo itself. I would recommend having Magic Flash on as the finisher, where Yuzora slams down to the ground and a big sort of darkness AoE effect comes out. Yuzora's combo right here is very all over the place. This man almost likes to dance about, and so it should be. This dude is all about slicing from 11,000 different directions at one time. So yeah, when you are fighting enemies in the field, you will notice that Yozora is going to go from left to right, from up to down, and while it can certainly be quite sporadic uh, sometimes, it's extremely enjoyable. You really do feel the power of this dude when you're playing it. While I do believe that the sporadicness of the combos are most likely intended, as of course these are literally the animations that have been ripped from the Yozora fight to be put into this base combo, um, I'm unsure if this is going to be something that might potentially be uh, refined in a future version, or again, if it is intended to this degree. Either way, it's incredibly fun to play. Also, Rising Spiral is custom here, and I have to say it is so satisfying to be able to throw around enemies like we got thrown around <laughs> during the Yozora fight. Pure just satisfaction. Yozora's aerial finisher is absolutely insane with this big electricity explosion type slam Holy gooses moose, dude. You've probably noticed by now, but yes, this mod comes with a custom lock-on and auto lock-on reticle to make it truly feel like you really are 
playing as Yuzora, I'd assume too that like if we ever did get a Yuzora game, there would probably be a different type of uh, reticle graphic. That's something I can see Square Enix doing. They're really good in the sense of those little detail type of things to really make it feel like you're truly playing as a different uh, alternate reality character to a certain degree. Uh, but yeah, I really like this. It's custom. It is themed, of course, after Yuzora. Extremely nice work. Yuzora can guard, but it's not the traditional guard that you'd expect, like actually putting the weapon in front of you or using a magic barrier. More so, Yuzora slashes to the side. It works just as a normal guard would. All of the counters do work, but there is a custom one here, which is a 360 spin attack enveloped in darkness. Now, looking at magic, it gets really, really cool here. So first off, uh, magic is now renamed to that of mana tech, which I really like. It sort of, I guess, complements the uh, type Final Fantasy roots that I suppose uh, Yuzora has been inspired from through Versus 13. And we have four custom magics replacing fire, thunder, blizzard, and arrow. Magic is the way that Yuzora utilizes his crossbow gun. The two magics that use Yuzora's gun is laser shot, which is replacing fire. This is the red laser beam attack that we see Yuzora use in the fight. The next one is EX beam, which is replacing blizzard. This is the blue unavoidable laser shot that Yuzora uses. These are incredibly fun to use, mainly because fire and blizzard are traveling projectiles, which can sometimes take quite some time depending on how far away you are from the enemy to actually reach the enemy whereas both laser shot and ex beam worked as actual laser shots they are more so instantaneous overclock which is replacing thunder is absolutely like what the schnitzel dude yuzura throws his sword at the targeted enemy and yeah 106,000 different crossbow projectiles absolutely obliterates them i found out of all of the magics this was certainly the most powerful to use of course uh, when looking at it thunder is generally the more powerful magic so this definitely does make sense here. Of course, just like Thunder, it also uses more MP. The last one that's been changed, though not completely finished from the seams, is Arrow. This has been changed to a massive fireball that almost acts as a sort of mine because it stays in the field until something makes contact with it. Though again, it doesn't really seem like this is finished as it seems like at the moment it doesn't work properly. Water can be used and I'm assuming that it will get changed to something custom in due time, but uh, it's hilarious to use this because <laughs> because it, it gets sent off in just uh, the most randomest of directions and then for whatever reason it tracks Yuzora's movement so depending on like where Yuzora's moving the water projectile will move with Yuzora. Again, work in progress, this is something that will likely get fixed. And obviously Yuzora can use Kiraga, very neat animation. Uh, thank god he couldn't pull this out during the fight, though the Kupo coin thing is absolute bullshit and still haunts me in my sleep to this day. Flow motion can fully be used, and I absolutely love this detail. The flow motion glow effect for Yuzora is red, rather than of course Sora's blue. And the flow motion attack effects have been altered as well, so that, yeah, the buzzsaw for example here has that really nice red effect going on. Yuzora is an absolute masterclass when it comes to teleporting and disappearing into thin air when it comes to that secret fight. So for the dodge mechanic, uh, that's been incorporated for Yuzora's dodge, he leaves behind his warp strike silhouette and teleports in the desired direction. Yuzora's got a custom animation for glide and it looks so cool. The red reticle that appears during the Yuzora fight, that graphic, uh, has been used here for the glide with this little swirling effect going on with a red lens flare. Thought I'd just add too that it's got a really cool sound effect when Yuzora glides. Like if I heard this coming from a mile off and the sound gradually creeping uh, louder and louder and louder, I would be shitting myself and I would definitely run for the high hills. Now, this'll do it. You won't catch me dying in there. Break. And right there, you could also hear Yuzora's battle quote, so these are all implemented into all of his attacks, of course taken from the secret fight. And the double flight double jump has been modified too with this red cylinder looking graphic, it almost reminds me of Dante's double jump graphic from Devil May Cry. And as you guys also saw too, yeah, Yuzora can swim, even with a custom swim faster animation to go along with it. But great moose of Massachusetts, what we do have to talk about here is the dive animation for Yuzora. 
Uh, I believe this is completely custom. I mean, I've never seen it. It looks just incredible and totally badass. And like, again, if we are going to get a playable Yuzora at some point, I'm assuming that dive mechanic is going to kind of be a thing that will stick around for future Kingdom Hearts games. Due to the scale of worlds, will probably remain open-ended like they were in Kingdom Hearts 3. This is exactly how I would imagine Yuzora's dive to look like. Like, look at this absolute style while this man is free-falling! So as you guys have seen, Yuzora uses his sword and crossbow gun, and this replaces the Kingdom Key as well as the Oath Keeper. Oblivion is also replaced, however, Yuzora is missing his crossbow gun as well as holding the sword in the opposite hand, not his left hand. The weapons as of right now are very much still a work in progress, as well as the forms that follow. Ashura has mentioned that there will be more weapons and there will be more form changes on top of shot locks too. Currently there's only one shot lock which is attached to uh, the Oath Keeper, which the Oath Keeper's name has been changed to Natriflugel. And the first shot lock for it is known as Illegal Finish, which I absolutely love, but still, it is unfinished. So yeah, in the ways of forms and shot locks and weapons, this is something that is still requiring a lot of work. When you are using the Oath Keeper though, you will see that its form change has been changed to Void Break, and it even does have a custom UI graphic to go along with it. Very nice, but it's unfinished in the sense of the moveset. It's non-existent. Yuzora will just use the base moveset. However though, uh, one that is slightly developed, which is second form, which is now known as Sternlick. Uh, sorry, I'm not good with German pronunciation. It still uses the second form UI graphic, but again, I'm assuming that this is something that will be changed. The only thing that's so far different about this form is uh, Yuzora does like a little break dance move with what looks like the nobody attack particle effects that, um, I believe Xemnas uses, and then he follows up with like a sliding attack, but again, this form is unfinished. What is really neat that we can utilize with this form is the very first finisher, which of course, second form has a total of three finishes, but this first one, it's the only one that's here, is known as High Voltage Supernova. And this is where things get extremely spicy. Mega Flare attacks are always something to lose your goddamn mind over, and yeah, this is Yuzora's Mega Flare attack. It's of course Yuzora's Desperation move, and also the move that we get to see Yuzora use in the Varum Rex ad. We can now utilize this ourselves, and uh, it does exactly what you expect it to do. It, for the most part, deep fries everything around you. What makes it even better is the massive death orb that Yuzora summons. It has a magnet effect to it, so yeah, all of the enemies are just going to be spinning around and around in an impending doom. It is so satisfying. You are able to use other form changes as well, so don't be afraid to use them. Uh, rage form is quite interesting. Well, nothing has really changed. Uh, when looking towards the UI graphic, it's been changed to the Nameless Star. That's because in an eventual update, there is going to be a form that replaces Rage form, known as Last Star. Now you might have noticed in that clip that, yeah, uh, what was up with Yuzora's uh, body proportions? Why did that look like Yuzora Jr.? So in instances where Yuzora uses uh, any of Sora's literal animations, so this is like using any of the team attacks, using links, amongst a lot of other things that haven't been modified. Yuzora's body is going to get scrunched and sort of squished down, uh, resulting in a baby Yuzora, because yeah, Yuzora's body proportions are different to that of Sora's. Sora is a small boy in comparison to Yuzora. Keeping in mind canonically, Sora is like 5'3", and honestly using this Yuzora mod and then like looking at cutscenes, it is some of the most hilarious stuff. In regards to the squishing that happens, I don't think that's something that's going to be changed, uh, unless of course Ashura goes ahead and literally modifies absolutely every last animation that is still using Sora's. In regards to cutscenes, I just cannot imagine that will be something that will be fixed. The low health sound effect has been changed, so instead of the blaring wake up for work alarm sound effect, uh, we now just have a simple heartbeat. Uh, I think this is really nice and is certainly less stressful than what is usually in the game. What a pain. And if you make it to the death screen, Yuzora performs this really interesting looking animation and also the Somnus theme from Final Fantasy XV plays. Quite fitting, to be honest.
And finally, the last two touches. The Station of Awakening at the very beginning of the game has been changed to be on top of the 104 building in Shibuya. It's kind of, I guess, insinuated in the secret episode that the 104 building was kind of acting as a dive to heart to a certain degree as Sora's literally transformed into the top of the 104 building. So it's kind of neat that it's been replaced. You might come across a little bit of scuffedness here just with uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 Sora T posing in the mirror reflection right there. And the final world has been adjusted to resemble the final world that we see in the secret episode, the nighttime version. To end off, I thought I'd show you guys the planned features that Ashura has posted over on the mod page. As you guys can see, there are five currently planned form changes that will be added in a future update. On top of that too, there is going to be quality of life improvements, loading screen replacements, so that being the Kingstagram images that happen during the loading screen, as well as pause menu replacements, changing the model in the camp menu. Ashura went on to mention, and many other features, as I plan to work on this project for a long time and hopefully expand it into the ultimate playable Yuzora experience. Not only that, but I do want to also post the credits too, because it wasn't just Ashura that worked on this mod, uh, but a whole team of people. While, of course, Ashura was the one that helmed this project, they did receive help from quite a few other people in the mod community. So an absolute massive shout out to them. I have to say, this mod is just quite simply mind-blowing. And I know, I know, I always say this in uh, most major mod feature videos, that the mod community is absolutely popping off, it's insane, etc, etc. But it really is, like with each new major mod that comes out, it just keeps getting better and better and better dude. This right here is really a true testament to the absolute talent that is in this community. And I honestly didn't expect the Kingdom Hearts mod scene to be thriving this much. We're about one month out of the first anniversary of Kingdom Hearts coming to PC and already we have content like this. I certainly didn't expect that. Hopefully you have enjoyed this breakdown of the Yuzora mod as I mentioned and as always the mod links will be in the description down below. With all that being said guys I'm Cynical, hopefully you dudes are having an absolutely fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.